The assessment tools of the step one exam. An underrated topic that many medical students don't pay attention to when they're preparing for the step one exam and it has the potential of boosting your score significantly. So the first question I want to answer when it comes to assessment tools is when should you start using assessment tools? And this is a common misconception that I see many medical students do when they're preparing for the step one exam is that they delay their assessment tool until the last month or the last week of their exam. And I understand that many medical students are anxious and concerned and they don't wanna score low on their assessment tools and bring their morale down. So that's why they keep the assessment tool until the end of their preparation, until they study everything so they score amazingly on these assessment tools. However, this is a big mistake because remember, these assessment tools are not the real exam. And who cares if you get a low score on your assessment tool? The purpose of assessment tools is to help you see where you stand and also learn from your mistakes so that's why I recommend using assessment tools from day one of your preparation do an assessment exam before you even start studying anything then do a second one after one to two months then a third one after two to four months and then you can do three to four assessment exams in the last one to two months of your preparation and that helps you track your progress if you see that you are weak in a certain topic you can try to improve that during your preparation if you see that you're scoring to 80s from the second assessment exam that means you might not need to study more you're ready for the exam because the majority of us studied for medical school did medical school exams and these base that we have already might be enough to pass the exams so that's why it's crucial to do assessment tools early on to see where you stand if you're ready or not where are your weak points and try to work on that during your whole study period the second question i want to answer about assessment tools is how to use assessment tools what is the best use to take advantage of this amazing resource. In my opinion, there are multiple things to keep in mind to make the most out of assessment exams. First, do two in a row. Most assessment exams consist of four blocks. However, the step one exam is seven blocks. The step two CK exam is eight blocks, which means most assessment tools are similar to half an exam. So that's why I recommend you do two assessment exams back to back to simulate the real exam, especially in the last one to two months of your preparation. Because I'm sure most students are like me, you're excited and so full of energy in the first two, three hours of your exam, but at the end, after the sixth or the seventh hour, you're much more tired, you're much more exhausted, and you wanna see how you perform in these late blocks to see if there is a problem and whether you need to work on that. So by combining two assessment exams together, you're simulating the actual exam and you're testing yourself if you can keep solving questions, keep focused for eight hours straight. But this is something you don't need to do from the first assessment exam. This is something you can focus on in the last one to two months. Of course, when you're solving assessment tools, do them exactly like the real exam. So each block is one hour, take breaks similar to the actual exam. So don't solve a question, see the answer, read the explanation and go to the next question, no. The purpose of this is to simulate the exam, even from day one. So try to do one block, one hour, take a break, another block until you finish the assessment exam, which is four blocks, and then you can start learning from it. Some assessment exams come with the answers, come with the explanation, so you can use it like an extension of your question bank. So after you finish the full assessment exam, which takes around four hours and a half, you can go and start reading the explanation, see where you answered correctly, where you didn't answer correctly, you can take notes, so you can learn from the assessment tool. Another thing I recommend to increase the value you take from assessment exams is to actually see where your mistakes are. See if you're making mistakes as a result of you not knowing the information, which needs probably more studying, or you knowing the information but forgetting what was it, which means you need to review the information you studied, or you studied the information and remembered it, but you did not think of the question correctly. You didn't analyze things correctly. And in that case, studying more or reviewing more will not help maybe solving more questions will help you with that problem so for me myself after each assessment exam I did I saw what percentage of the questions that I answered incorrectly were a result of lack of knowledge or I didn't remember the information correctly or I didn't analyze the information correctly and I adjust my studying plan based on that the third question I want to answer is how many assessment tools should you use during your whole study preparation and the answer will depend on how much time you have if you're tight on time maybe consider three to four assessment exams 
If you have enough time, you can consider up to 10 assessment exams. Personally, I'm an advocate of assessment exams, so I generally recommend people to do as many as they could. However, don't go and do 20 of them because at some point, there wouldn't be added value of you doing more assessment exams because remember, they're also taking time from your studying, from you reviewing the information that you studied. So you have to find that sweet spot of you getting value from the assessment exams but not losing on studying time. And finally, to the question that everyone asks, which is which assessment exam should I do, which are the best, and how predictable they are. I generally recommend doing the free sample that is provided by the USMLE, do you all self-assessment one and you all self-assessment two, and the most recent two to four MBMEs. I feel that gives you a good balance of assessment exams from different resources to prepare you best for your exam. And I didn't specify a specific MBME because they keep changing, they keep updating them. That's why I said the most recent two to four MBMEs. Now let's talk about the predictability of the assessment tools. This is not only important for the step two CK because you want to know your score, but also for the step one exam. Because if the assessment exam tells you that you're gonna pass, but it doesn't have good predictability, you might go to the actual exam and get shocked and fail. And vice versa, if you're failing on the assessment exam, but it's not good predictable of your assessment, you might be actually passing on the actual exam. So that's why it's critical to understand which of these MBMEs and your self-assessment and the sample is a good predictor of your step two CK score or of you passing and failing your step one exam. And again, because your self-assessment, the MBME, the free sample, all get updated frequently, they add new questions, they add new MBMEs. I created a sheet in which students put their scores of the actual exam and also how they performed on the MBMEs, UL self-assessment, the free sample, and when they took these assessment tools. And we keep updating the sheet with the information from the students that take the exam recently. So you can get a very good idea about the predictability of these assessment tools, not only for the step one, but also for the step two CK. To get this sheet, sign up through the link in the description below. You will receive an email to confirm your subscription, and then you'll get the PDF with the full information you need. And as I said, we keep this sheet up to date. Now I'd love to hear your thoughts about assessment tools, any questions you have, so don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below. If you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring to help you formulate a plan and a strategy for your step one or step two CK, if you need tutoring to help you understand certain difficult concepts on the exam, or just need guidance about different aspects of the step one or the step two CK, go ahead and check out our USMLE tutoring services, which has 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you're not happy, we'll give you your money back. If you find any value in this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and good luck on your exam.